I just want a lollipop every... Welcome Raiders to another Raid Shadow Legends video and in this one we're going to be talking about a special type of champion that I've been dang to talk about on this channel but uh <laughs> it came a little too late but I think people would appreciate it and I'm actually going to be throwing back to back to back to back on this channel champion spotlights first one we're going to get to is uh Miss Encora White Queen Encora okay so um, why is this champion so good? I mean, she was a fragment summon, right? A lot of people were able to get this champion. Um, but I knew right from the get-go, when I saw her, I thought, Godseeker meets... Let's look at the skill kit before we look at the uh, gear and masteries. So A1 is Necro Bolt. She hits attack. She attacks one enemy, right? She has a 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skill by two turns, except herself, which is actually a good thing, actually. If White, Queen, uh, White King Narciss is on the same team and has any active skills on cooldown, she will reduce it by 2. That's amazing for his A2. If White King Narciss is on the same team and has no active skills on cooldown, decreases the cooldown of a random ally skills by 2 turns except herself. So if Narciss is not there, she will do it to someone else, and if Narciss is there, she will prioritize him. If, if the champion uh, if the cooldown of, of a skill is fully reset, also heal that ally by 10% of this champion's max HP. Once again, for people who don't know, we like to build our champions 1 to 1 3 3 ratio, right? Which is like A1, you know, default, A2, 3 fully booked, 3 turn cooldown, and A3, 3 turn cooldown. Usually, this makes sense why you'd want that even more, right? Because then you'd, you'd get that uh, free healing, right? Uh, by doing that. If your skill is a 4 turn cooldown fully booked and she reduces it by 2, there's still one left. So it's not really fully reset, right? Um, then she has like three extra books here. You can book it up, which is important actually to get that uh, last 20%. On the A2, Shield Evameria. Removes all debuffs from all allies, so it's a cleanse. Places a shield buff on them equal to 25% of this champion's max HP. So you want to build her a decent amount of HP, of course. Uh, if White King Nurse is on the same team, also places a strength and a buff on all allies for two turns. And the last part is then fills the turn meter by all, uh, of all allies by 10%. So she's a turn meter booster by 10% on a three turn cooldown. She's a shield buffer based on her max HP, 25% of her max HP. And then if Narcissus is on there, she will give shield and strengthen just like a Mithrala. If you actually look, if you actually think of Mithrala's A3, it's basically the same, right? The only, if you don't have Narcissus though, it's not the same. But if you do, it's basically the same. It's actually better than Mithrala's A3. Because Mithrala does not give you 10% turn meter boost. So, power creep. Uh, let's look at the A3. Rise My Love. Uh, this is a 3 turn cooldown, fully booked. Uh, there is two books over here. Revives a dead ally with 50% HP and 75% turn meter. Resets the cooldown of the revived ally skills. So, it's like a Godseeker, but you get a lot more turn meter, and you still get to reset their skills, which is pretty nice. If the target is White King Narciss, Revives them with 75% HP, so you get more HP back, and 100% turn meter instead, which is huge, kind of like a Wukong's passive. After the revival, decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 10%. That's pretty good, because let's say you're bringing back like a Harima, or you're bringing back a Rodos, or whatever you have as a nuker. That is super good for the champion to actually get their turn, because people used to like to cut in, right? If White King Narciss is revived instead... Decrease the turn meter of all enemies ex uh, by 20%. So you basically get to like reduce all their turn meter by 20%. Um, you don't get to steal it, unfortunately. That'd be really good if she stole it. But she just decreases it all, which is nice. Once again, that's, that synergizes with the 100% turn meter um, that the champion is getting. Now, if it's not a White King Narcissus, they only get 75% turn meter. So it's 75% and 10% decreasing of enemies is only 85%, which means there's a 15% chance that, of oh, not 15% turn meter that somebody will cut in, in front of your other nuker that's not Narcis. Um, and I like the last part though, this effect cannot be resisted. That way you don't have to build any accuracy on her if Narcis is on the same team. Uh, and then their passive, which is really, really, I was like, what? Uh, whenever an enemy tries to place a fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun, or petrification, uh, debuff on the ally with the highest crit damage. Would have been amazing if they put sheep there too. Uh, on the ally with the highest crit damage, transfer those debuffs to this champion instead. So it doesn't matter if you don't have Narcissus and there's a Wukong, Harima, Rodos, it goes to her. As long as it's the highest crit damage. 
It's pretty nice. Fills the turn meter of this champion by 50% if this champion misses their turn due to one of those debuffs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. At the start of this champion's turn, remove any fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep stun, or petrification from this champion if White King Narciss is on the same team. All right. So a lot of people tell me, hey, you don't have to build like resist because if you have Narcissus, she's fine. She'll cleanse it anyways. True. But if you don't and they ban it in live arena or you don't own a Narcissus because you couldn't go for the voids. Well, it's really good to build resist on her. So that way you can kind of resist that debuff that gets transferred usually unless it's an unresistable, you know, CC, right? Uh, if there are multiple champions on the same team, only one will activate. That's true, that's because you don't want two Ancoras basically transferring these debuffs infinitely and cleansing them infinitely. No one gets, yeah, so they had to they had to put that there. That is a three uh, three books you have to put there, though, but it's honestly, it's a must, right? So you can have it have it happening all the time. Um, and then she has a speed lead by 19%, and I put, um, I put a Blessing of Life Harvest because I use her in Live Arena, I use her in Ice Golem as well, so it's very good to destroy enemies max HP when they get revived. Good for Wukong, good for Ice Golem, good for Live Arena. Uh, in terms of Masteries, where did I go? I went Resist on my champion. I could have went, like, Timely Intervention, I could have went more, like, Health if I really wanted to, but I'm using this champion in PvP and PvE, so you really want to go Resistance. Right, I like I said um, earlier, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting res here. Um, and you may be like, but Jay, you put stone skin on her. Like, you know, why would you need still res? Well, because you still need resistance to like. I had a I had a Amius or a Wukong try to cheat me, right? Or um, not Amius, uh, Armand. Sorry, Armand's the magnificent. I had him try to cheat me with his A3 or Wukong with the A2, and resistance just nothing happens. I'm still in stone skin, just chilling, right? Um, so let me show you my stats on my champion. It's pretty stacked. Um, 92,000 HP, 4,000 defense, 247 speed, which you're like, why is it that number specifically for speed tune for Live Arena? Um, and uh, also with her lead, if you need her to go faster than 251 for hard Doom Tower or, or pretty much all of, you know, mid uh, late to end game, you can just put her in the lead position and then boom, you're able to use her full auto everywhere. That's why I did it like that. In terms of resistance as well, I was able to get 772, which I'm not done, trying to get to that 800 plus, preferably. Um, what do you want to, what sets do you want to use on this champion? Protection, speed sets, righteous sets, stone skin, bommel set, uh, bolster set, and uh, also the new one, supersonic, is another great set for her as well. But I put her in stone skin, full stone skin, for now, six piece. Um, let's go check her out. So, what does this, what does this champion actually do, like, on your account? Um, we're not going to show her a Nightmare campaign. I usually show my champions a Nightmare. Just, just not going to... We're not going to do no damage. It's, it's not, no, I'm not going to sit there and, and do that. Um, but she's a champion that's going to be able to help you out in a lot of different areas. If you're having trouble with Iron Twins, you know, you can get that shield, which can help you out. Be careful if you don't bring decreased speed, because the shield is considered end turn meter. Um, but she's just an amazing champion that can help you in a lot of areas. Now, mainly, you probably might use her in, in Sand Devil, right? If you don't have a God Seeker, you can kind of create, like, uh, you won't be able to go too far, right? You'll probably maybe go, like, 19, 20, because God Seeker allows her to revive herself, which allows this infinite loop as you progress down. But if you're still having trouble getting down, try it in Korra. Trust me, if you build a really tanky one, you should be fine. Um, she's amazing for Faction Wars. She's going to help you out pretty much everywhere. I use her, um, as you can see, I use her my high, hard 10 ice golem right here. I do have some other champions that some people don't have, like Taras and Narciss, but Narciss and Taras are my best HP nukers on my account, so that's why I use them, and it makes sense to use them here. I have them pretty decently blessed. Um, if you want to see the run, I can run it once so we can see what, what happens. So she's just going to power up, you know, your your champions like Taras to get more buffs. Narcissus is going to get more buffs as well, which allows his A3. So it just, you know, just to, to protect your nukers, buff your nukers, fill your turn meters, nu uh, the nuker, the turn meter of the nukers so you can actually take turns. And as you saw there, she used her A1 to reset Narcissus on the A2, which is amazing. I do have an Artak in uh, Relentless. Ooh, that is so good. See, that, that, that Necrotic Blast is um, Narcissus' A2. So it's just, it's so nice to just see her just keep resetting him over and over. It's amazing. 
Now, can you use White Queen and Korra without having Narcissus? Yes. I fight people all the time who don't have her. But it's just, a, you get a little bit more if you do. Um, that's why I had to go for them both. They're not only a counter to, to, to Rosh Mariska technically, right? They allow you to go through a lot of champions like Pytheon. Um, you know, champions like um, Mermithrala, Mariska. You know, it's very nice. But if you're not doing a lot of PvP and you just want to use Ankora in PvE, she's basically amazing everywhere. The only place you do not be careful when using Ankora in Amius, the Lunar Archon. If you're not if you're not prepared or you don't have enough resistance, enough speed, Ankora reducing people's cooldown on the A1 over and over and over, and you can't control that. That's a hundred percent RNG, fifty percent chance, right? You could ruin your Amius, the Lunar Archon run. If you don't have the right champions or you don't have the right stats or enough blessings to stay alive. So I would be careful using her there. I have shown that you can use her there. I have shown in how I won on hard Amius the Lunar Archon using her. So once again, you know, um, overall just be careful when you're using her there. But here, as you can see, we're just keeping, keeping the champions alive. We're getting through turns. Lydia gets pretty close to dying here. But it's okay, and Korra's gonna give us that shield, you know? We reap the boss, and boom, there you go. Actually, somehow, personal record. Wow! Right? 210? Not bad. 81 turns, 80 turns average. Trash piece. Alright, so there you go, and Korra's helping there. Can Korra help your uh, spider? Well, yeah, clearly, if you need to progress, and you need to move down, your ha and you need to keep people alive, or, tur or you don't have enough speed, 10%. Now, it's only, oh, unfortunately, it's not 20% like Kaja. But 10% turn meter boost is better than nothing, especially if you're able to go fast. Now, um, Dragon, she's going to be re really good really good for Dragon. The only play, Fire Knights, ugh, you're not going to use her in Fire Knight unless you need to reset, like, one of your champions, like, ally attacks or something. You bring Encore and hope for the for the RNG of it. But why take the risk of that, man? That's, that's a little too crazy. But it doesn't mean you can't do it, right? When there's a will, there's a way. But I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't take that risk, you know? Um... Definitely going to be good for Shogun, if you're progressing Shogun. Definitely really good there, because you can reduce someone like a Cold Heart. You can reduce someone like an Emic Trunk Heart, right? Get your cooldowns reduced. It is a little RNG, but it can help you win and progress. So definitely show you there. Um, Faction Wars, I don't have to show you. Everyone knows that Knight Revenant is one of the hardest, <laughs> one of the hardest factions out there, right? And you have a Reviver, a Cleanser, and a Champion that can buff. Clearly, she's going to be insane against the Faction Wars uh, in Night Revenant. So, yeah, I don't have to show her off there. Now, let's go to Arena real quick so I can show you uh, where I'm pretty much using this champion. Um, now, you can do different variants with Encore, which is beautiful. You could do the Speed variant, right, is where you put her in the lead position, right? You put her in the lead. You probably either, if you don't go Life, Har uh, life Harvest, you're going to probably go Sheep, right, if you have a, if you have a six star. If you don't have 6-star, you need accuracy to land that sheep. No one's going to build in Korra with accuracy. So be careful if you don't have a 6-star yet. Um, or, you know, maybe you didn't go for the 5, and you're like, nah, I'm just going to go Life Harvest. Or you can go Intimidating Presence, Life Harvest. You can go... Um, damn, Emergency Heal. Emergency Heal sounds pretty good. She does give shields to people, so she could heal herself up when her shield breaks. That's another good one as well. Um, but... You can put her in the lead position and you can build a fast and core. When I mean by fast, I mean you're looking at like 350 speed all the way to 400 plus, right? But if you don't want to build a fast, fast, fast and core and you'd rather build a little more stone skin like me, or you might build more resistance, then you might not want to put her in the lead position. You might want to bring like a resist lead aura, or you might want to bring somebody else. Uh, you could bring, you know, accuracy aura. You could put Narcissus in the lead. If you don't have a Narcissus and you have another HP champion, you could bring Emic Trunkheart. Right, and you could do this whole like resetting skills over and over and over again using Encore. Now there is a there is a comp that people are using um, in in Plat Plat Arena, which is like this. Right, that's like the very strong one because all these champions can like can like reduce cooldowns. Like she resets, he gets free resets from the Encore. Uh, Emic resets everybody. Right, so it's just a lot of like tons of like turn meter boosts, lockouts. Like it's really really strong. But if you don't have a Narcissus, let's say you don't have one, or you Mecho, but you have these two champions because you've been playing the game, you're more free to play, I will give you 
a team that's going to be really, really cool. If you go Armand's in the lead, right? Because Armand's was a Fragment Fusion summon just passed. You go Emic Trunk Heart. You get, you get the resets here, which will help out reset the Armand's. So you get more Sheeps, more Strips, and Stuns. Emic's going to be resetting everybody else. And you're going to bring a, a really a, a decently fair... Like, everyone has a decent monkey, right? Monkey's really good. Now, you might be like, well... Why would I bring Monkey here? You could bring someone else too. You could bring Harima. I'd bring someone that's not in Stone Skin. Um, and you might be like, why? You know, you could bring Taras, or maybe even a Nishak, a Kandrafon, a Ronda. You know, the only reason why you want that is because if you want all the other champions to be in Stone Skin, preferably, so that way when they go and try to, uh, they kill the, they, they have only one champion to kill because it's not in Stone Skin, which is going to be your Nuker, right? Doesn't matter if it's Vlad. They'll kill it, and then Encora can literally just go right and revive the champion right back. And there's no one else to revive. And it works full auto as well. So if somehow you're just full autoing and they kill your champion, she'll revive that person because it's the only person to revive. But if Armand's is not in Stone Skin, if Emic is, you know, you don't have to put Emic in, truck, uh, in Stone Skin because he has an unkillable. But I'm just, I'm just telling you for full autos, that's what I've noticed. But I do have a lot of Encora teams. I have the Royal Monkey, okay? So you don't have to if you don't have these two champions, you can change them out, right? Like I said, you can put Emic and something else. I have the Sheeps R Us, which is basically um, honestly we could take out yeah, we could actually take out the Armons here and put Monkey, right? And then you get double sheeps now. Now you got two champions sheeping everybody. So sheep sheeps R Us is pretty good, right? We get a lot of sheeping. But it might make your battle your battles way too long, so be careful using this comp <laughs> might be good for live arena, but it's not really good for classic because you might be shaping too many enemies indefinitely. Uh, so be careful with you know using sheep R us. You don't have to have Yameko. You could have any other reset champion like Emic. You could shit. You could even bring a Kaimar. You could even bring a Renegade. Honestly, I don't, I don't care what you bring. <laughs> you could bring anything. Honestly, um, the Royal Lizard is more of like a resist team, very slow and steady. Uh, Lydia Pals very good to uh, has a, another resist team right because she has the resist in battles. By uh, by a hundred, which is insane to give everybody a hundred resist, so that way you don't get sheeped, or that way you can re you know reduce a chance of getting debuffed. But it's awesome um, as well because Lydia counters a lot of revivers, right? Pythion, Duchess, Mariska, Arbiter, the list goes on, right? And Korra. Uh, but be careful when you're using Lydia against Wukong; she can waste her passive to Wukong, and Wukong can just keep coming back. So be careful about that. But anyways, let's just let's just get into a battle. <laughs> let's just get straight into a battle and show off. So my Encore is the first champion that goes. Okay. So they're gonna do their thing, right? They're gonna control my champions. I'm gonna cleanse. I'm gonna lock them out. They're gonna do their skills. I'm gonna sh try to you know try to nuke them down. They have a, they have all their champions in st stone skin, including Taras. Taras can't actually kill us because we locked him out. UDK is there, that's really, UDK is really annoying of a champion. Notice the stun was supposed to go on Narcissus, but it didn't. It went to Ankora, but she was in stone skin. So that AoE stun from, uh, from Mikage didn't do nothing. Now it's just UDK and us, right? And we're slow, slow, slow and steady. I like this Harima version because it allows you to take the blunt. Right, if they if they use a lot of nukes towards you, you can take the blunt towards, and it's really good. Yep. So there you go. Like, um, unfortunately, Encore does not give increased defense, so she's not really great for uh, Harima. She's better for Encore is better for HP champions, um, preferably like Taras, Narcissus, things like that. She doesn't give increased attack like a Makage or Arbiter. She doesn't give uh, increased defense like a Siffy or you know like a Staltus gets him. Like so. Yeah, that's the only downside I can say about her. But other than that, she's really, really strong, man. Like, legit. One of my best champions on my account. Because she's a 5-star, and I put one of my best stone skin gears on her, so. As you see, look, they used Baron, but they couldn't kill us because Harima was there. If you want, I'm going to go back because I know I'm going to win this, okay? I, I'm about to take, literally take a turn with Narcissus and one-shot them all. But I'm going to purposely lose the battle. I'm going to take out my Harima. Right, and show you letting the Baron nuke me this time, right? Without Harima there. Let's take it out. Let's go let's go the Royal Monkey, right? Let's go the Royal Monkey. So I have two nukers here. Let the Baron let them go first. They're gonna kill my monkey and probably maybe even kill Narcis. Nope. Almost killed a the Narcis there. Yeah. 
And we're still going to come back. So I just want to show you that you can go second. You can let them go first. And just, just blow all your champions up. And you can just bring your nukers back. And if you bring Wukong, you can revive your other nuker. So in core is really good to bring two nukers. Bring a monkey that's a free reviver that always comes back. And then revive your a different champion. So I think in core will be really good with champions like Little Miss Annie. Uh, champions like um, I know this is a, I know this is an old school champion, but legit champions like um, Brachus that bring themselves back, so you don't have to revive the champion, right? So champions like Brachus, champions that have revive on death built in their kits, right? Like Crutraxa. So she can just bring herself back for free. You don't have to. Um, but per I would say, you know, Kratak is kind of slow of a champion. But I would say, preferably, Brachus, Little Miss Annie, Wukong are like the three best, like, non-HP champions that I would kind of build. I don't have a Kratak or, or a, Ra a, a Brachus I would show you. Or a Little Miss Annie. I only have a Wukong. Um, I have done a lot of work with them in... in <laughs> even, even in um, Tag Team Arena, they do really, really good. Uh, as you can see over here, my defense, right? This is my Tag Team Arena defense. I use the same uh, offense that I was showing you here as my defense on the second one. And you can see it does pretty good. They use the plus two Cupidus, a plus four Venus, a plus three Mithrala, and a Necrit, and could not beat the team. So that's, that is pretty crazy. And then as we over here, you can see some crazy stuff over here with plus four Barons and plus four Duchess. And <laughs> so yeah, man, like she's really, really strong. Don't sleep on her. Um, do we have any more Tag Team Arena fights I can... No, there's no more free ones. I've been fighting a lot of free ones here. Just make sure make sure on Mondays and Tuesdays you get free free wins, man. Um, look how deep we are in the green. That's crazy. I think that's my rec I think it's a personal record. I did a live arena. I did a lot of live arena. Um, you guys didn't get to see it, unfortunately. But I did a lot. I only lost I think one or two, one or two games. As you can see, the one that I lost and Cora wasn't there. <laughs> Right? She, they banned my they banned my Encora, but I also messed up. I should have told Mikage to to go. For, uh, I should I meant to ban their uh, lady. Um, whoa, uh, what's her name? Lady Kimmy. I forgot to ban their Kimmy. I got messed up. But as you can see, Encora is literally at every single time I can use her, I will use her in my live arena. So don't sleep on her, man. Um, in Clan Boss, where could you use her in Clan Boss or Hydra? Um. Yeah, you could use her in Clan Boss, but the problem the problem is you can mess up your speed tune because she reduces cooldowns of a skill. So if you have a if you have a team speed tune based on like one to one ratio, her reducing the skills of a cooldown can mess up your whole thing. So honestly, unless you're manual in Clan Boss, you can't use Encora. Now, when it comes to Hydra, though, when it comes to Hydra, you can use her. Yes, because she cleanses, right? Which is great for like when they put the true fears or you get like decreased attack or provoked. You can cleanse all your champions kind of like a Mithrala basically. She's like a Mithrala that reduces cooldowns on the A1. So I like her a lot. Um, have I put her in my, in my Hydra teams? No, but you know what? I'm this close to actually s seriously putting her in my Hydra. Because I like to have full Ida, uh, auto Hydras. So I might make a video maybe specifically just on that. In Doom Tower, of course, she's amazing. If you guys have not seen my my new Doom Tower full auto, I had a previous full auto using other champions with like Tuhana Rock and some other and Snitrack and Bivold. Now I have a new one using Ancora and all my champions that I pretty much use in PvP. So pretty stacked full auto Doom Tower. Yeah, I know it's pretty <laughs> seems pretty pay to win. It, it it is it is it is to a degree, um, but yeah. Even though I got Taras for free, and I got Encore for free, and Yumeko was free. The only one I paid for, actually, like, bought Void Shards for, was for Narcissus and Warlord. Um, alright, and let's go to Curse City. And in Curse City, I am spamming the champion everywhere. Even in Amius, I have used her against Amius as well. As you can see, look, I beat Amius the Lunar Archon on hard mode using Encora in the lead position. And she was resetting a lot of champions, which was kecking me a little bit, right? Because the boss will get switch forms very fast. But I just, I showed it to prove a point that even Encora can still be used in hard version of, of, of um, Amius the Lunar Archon. And you can still win. But, anyways. That is for another video if you guys want to see how to beat hard mode um, Amius. Because I already beat it like seven, six times. But I know... <laughs> I did it on stream, then I did it again on stream, and then I did it again on stream. But anyways, 
thank you so much everybody for watching this champion spotlight i am going to go to narcis next which is the duo for Encore, and i'll be able to show you a lot more more because the champion is a damage champion right um but thank you so much um if you want to leave a comment down below if you're building Encore, how do you build Encore? let me know and i'll see you guys thank you so much if you can if you guys want to like share the video you can i would appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next racial legend video bye readers